Labrit, good morning. I'll quickly grab the remote control and I will try to... I will start with the good news. You are going to have a coffee break, although it's pretty late, so I'll be cutting short or shorter than intended my presentation. Uh, and I will try to link uh, the former presenters with my topic, a speed. So what we are going, I'm going to present to you is somewhat related to the, the speed and the movement as well. And, and let me think of those 1.92 seconds. Uh, we recently received the third uh, place, the bronze medal in the bobsleigh, with a split of five hundredths of a second, and we were third. So all about the speed. Some of the former Latvian racers, the brothers, those who follow the racing, the rally racing, they might recognize the guys. They told me that they have made a record from Valmiera to London, to those Silicon Valley of the motor racing in 33 hours. I've been once in a Formula One racing uh, four or five years ago in Silverstone. It took me ages to get from the Luton airport to Formula Racetrack. I've just checked the distance is about 60 kilometers and I sat in a car, chartered car, with an English driver so he knew where to go uh, for three hours. The solution is probably a bit of, of my presentation here. Those who know what's the rail, uh, rise the hands who at least on a weekly basis use means of rail transportation including trams and subways. Not so many, I expected more. And those who usually uh, travel uh, to the office or for the leisure on the railway, the, the real railway, high speed, not the high speed. So what we are going to do with the Rail Baltica is a high speed train construction. And what we say, Rail Baltica is not only kind of a piece of the railroad to be constructed in Latvia, and it's not a piece of a railroad to be constructed in the Baltic states either, just to say. It is a missing link between the western part of Europe and the corridor, which is already constructed for many years, starting to stretch from Holland across to Germany towards Warsaw, and then the missing part is somewhat from the Warsaw eastwards uh, to the Baltic countries. And the railway is the infrastructure for the passenger and the freight flow, as well as uh, a new catalyst to grow the economy development in the region. As I said, missing link, and this link is, is needed for us, for the Bolts, as well as the, for the Europeans. It's not just a, a local project. I'm repeating it once again, since the perception is that this is going to be lasting too, lo too long, it's going to be costing us too much and we can't afford it. There are many aspects why we need this. So this is going to be a, a game changer in the region and in the European Union in total. So there is no railway system which is easily to be connected with uh, uh, existing European railway gauge. So the new line is European gauge, double track, and uh, will be serving partially, we believe, uh, as, as a part of a connector to the Arctics as a new corridor. So the Ice Age is not to be coming, but the meltdown period is coming. So the global warming and the, the global planners think in the 50 years, so the Arctic Sea, the North, North Sea part will be open for more than two months as it is now or three months. And uh, so the summers will be hotter in England, I guess. And uh, some of the goods might arrive from the Far East, from the Arctic part, rather than from the uh, South part, as well as this new corridor, transportation corridor, could be serving the goods trafficking uh, from the uh, Asia. What it is technically, it's a piece of 870 kilometers, green field, nothing exists uh, of such a kind. The passenger trains are expected to be running at 240 kilometers an hour, and the freight trains as, as fast as 120. 
electrified. So we are develop developing a project which is definitely environmentally sustainable. So we have an internal ambition, which we are going to talk in a years, that we will have zero emission from a train or zero impact. So all the waste recovery, uh, etc. So that will be a natural part of ours. Further, few stops over the distance from Tallinn towards the Lithuanian Polish border, and the main calling stations are Tallinn, Perno, Riga, naturally, with the link to the Riga airport, and further Panevėžis, Kaunas, and, and perhaps also uh, Vilnius, which is the capital of Lithuania. Where we are with the project development phase, uh, much of a Planning is, is already accomplished and done, so we have entered very recently, uh, we announced the procurements of uh, detailed technical designs for certain stretches in Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. So we are in the design phase. Very challenging project. Uh, those who are from Baltics, I think, recognize uh, from the media coverage, so it's politically very influenced project. Uh, and this is what we are dealing with mostly. How it is relating to the industry who is here, I think uh, the Mark uh, gave a tremendously encouraging speech. Uh, unless the railways are less regulated, you would have as plenty opportunities to innovate as in the automotive industry. But there is, I think, unseen, un Unprecedented opportunity for you to innovate and, and come up with ideas. Again, once again, reiterating what Hendrik said or cited is do it now, do it locally. As, as for the financing or availability of the uh, money to construct the project, we have two signed grant agreements of the total close to uh, 820, 830 million and there's another grant agreement under the negotiation, giving in a total 1 billion euros at our disposal to invest in the construction of the railway. Um, some of you who have attended our global forum last year have seen these slides and, and what we say and expect and what I've said also before, this railway infrastructure will be a game changer and I think in 10 years or 11 years from now, when I will ask the question who is using the train on a weekly basis, there will be few hands rising who are not using. Uh, commuters with, the, with the kind of departures between the uh, stations, eight on, on the daily base, uh, with a more frequency between uh, Riga and the airport, uh, Riga Central Station and the airport, and some frequent, more frequent journeys between Kaunas and, and uh, Vilnius. And, and you can see also on the graph what could be the kind of pickup uh, on, on the passenger flow. It's CBA data as, as best they could estimate uh, the figures are here. And as you can see, one third, more than one third of the passenger flow is expected to be within the Baltics. In the same manner, so we have estimated what would be uh, the flows for the freight with a frequency uh, 9 to 12 uh, between Tallinn and, and Riga and then uh, with uh, kind of different patterns also towards the south. And you can see in Kaunas up to 25, 30 departures of the freight trains towards the south, where the freight will come from. A major part from Finland, as well as we expect that this will facilitate also uh, an influx of the uh, freight flow from the Far East, uh, CIS countries. Uh, Finland, it's already using our roads to forward uh, the, the freights from Finland uh, to, to Germany, to their home markets. And it's interesting that the studies show that majority of the sea vessels, majority of the cargo lorries, uh, some of the trains, they somewhat return back to Finland half, half full or half empty. Uh, and I think when 
talking to the Finnish industry, uh, logistics industry representatives, they say, well, there is a railway system in the Baltics, but it's slow and it's expensive and it's not tailor-made or bespoke to be used user-friendly. So there are a lot of reloadings and it's a lot of time wasted and it's inefficient. So Finns are very supportive to uh, Rail Baltica and also their tunnel project is highly dependent on the success, success of the Rail Baltica. So one third of a total freight flow already is taken by the Finns. So there's a huge potential for Rail Baltica to be successful. Uh, this slide we particularly love because it's really addressing the, the sustainability issue. And we are not saying that we are somewhat in a competition with the road and somewhat in a competition with, uh, with the maritime freight flows. Uh, rather than saying to move one cubic meter or one ton of goods across uh, 100 kilometers, it costs tenfold more by the car and it impacts hundredfold more by the car rather than by, by the railway in terms of CO2 emissions. So eventually we have to change our paradigms of traveling. So there is an, a European movement to enforce shift to rail. So the people and the freight is kind of bound to be moving from the maritime uh, and from the uh, road transportation to the rails. Benefits versus costs. I will dwell very, very briefly just to say that the whole project will cost close to six billion and the total benefits are calculated to be many fold uh, more than, than the, the cost envisaged to, to construct it. These are the main components contributing to the, to the total benefit, the macroeconomic benefit and I think here you can see uh, what are the main kind of uh, gains and the next slide shows what are the areas and I think if you thoroughly go later on on, on the printed versions I think uh, at least my part will be available to you uh, in an in electronic version if you like so go through these macroeconomical uh, unquantified economic benefits and see where you can develop your businesses whether it's uh, drone related, whether it's steel manufacturing, whether it's a concrete, whether it's civil working, whether it's IT or combination of those. There's a plenty of room to in, uh, innovate. The project implementation, uh, very complex arrangement for, for time being. There are six project implementers uh, across the Baltics and the joint venture rail boat, uh, RB Rail, is, is a total venture, jo joint venture of the three ministries of the Baltic countries. So not an easy organization to run, so therefore maybe you, you, you don't see uh, for that or another reason something being already constructed uh, on, on, uh, on the land. So be patient, bear with us. There will be some visible marks very, very soon, starting with 2019 when the uh, railway central railway station will be uh, renovated. This is our management. Uh, I think here, as, 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 as we call ourselves, that we are transparent and accessible. Uh, you may address whatever question related to either innovations or your potential to contribute to the project by either contacting myself, any board member, or the country managers. And I have brought a set of the brochures and the business cards. I, I think they are somewhere in, in the conference room at the end of, on the tables. So take the information, uh, be in touch with us, and we can share what's the development of, of the project. And, and one habit, apart from uh, the news portals you are visiting and Facebook and Instagram, visit our homepage. So all the information is, is updated basically on a weekly basis. Thank you very much, and I think I might invite everyone for the coffee break. Or you will do that. Thank you. Thank you.